Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, generate some descriptive statistics using uh, SPSS, and I am using SPSS for the Mac. Uh, the interface may appear slightly different if you're using a PC, but um, everything else should be about the same. And uh, the data I have here is uh, um, some data about the S&P 500, so I have the closing price and the the change, and I'm going to do descriptives on the change here today. So um, there's three ways, three general ways anyway, to get um, descriptive statistics out of SPSS and they all do something uh, slightly different and uh, some are more comprehensive than others. I am going to start with the most basic thing you think you would start with when you're when you're trying to get descriptive statistics. Um, just select descriptives. Okay, and um, here um, the change is already over there, but I'll just show you how to get it over there in case you don't know. Um, you can select the variable that you want to get descriptives for and then either double click on it or send it over with this arrow. Okay, and then to select what statistics you want to have show up, uh, you're going to come into the options dialog box. All right, and just run through and check off uh, the things that you want to uh, have displayed. Click continue and then OK and the the engine will will generate the statistics pretty quickly and uh, you can see um, it generates a, a, a horizontal table and it gives you everything that we asked for okay and I guess the the general takeaway here is that uh, it looks like we're, we're seeing something that is uh, fairly close to normal, normally distributed, okay, and um, I can tell that by the skewness, the skewness is very low. Uh, kurtosis is, is somewhat high, uh, probably indicates a big uh, spike or a, a very peaked uh, middle on this, on this distribution, okay. All right, I'm going to go back to the uh, Analyze tab, all right, and uh, I'm going to show you the second method. I'm going to go in and uh, select Frequencies. All right, and with uh, Frequencies, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select the change and send that over. All right, you can see that we have uh, a couple of other options here. All right, I'm going to go into Statistics, and uh, interestingly, it appears that I have more uh, options here for descriptives. All right, so I can get some percentiles. All right, I'm just going to select some stuff, um, quartiles. But if you want to uh, name your own percentiles, uh, you can check this box. Okay, type in the percentile, click Add. All right, and add whatever percentiles you want. All right, I'll get the standard deviation. All right, the range, and the min, and the max. Okay, I'm going to leave off the, the skewness and kurtosis. Uh, we already saw those earlier. I'll click uh, continue. All right, and I just want to move this out of the way. Um, so, so basically what we're getting in addition to some of the general statistics that we got before, uh, we're going to be able to see the median now, and, and we're going to see some percentiles. All right, we're also going to be able to graph this. Okay, and so I am going to graph a histogram so we can see the shape of the data and uh, I'm going to superimpose on that a normal curve so we can compare uh, the data as it's graphed to what it would look like if it was normally distributed. All right, I'm going to click continue and then OK and again it generates things pretty quickly. All right, here's our table. All right, so a much different looking table. All right, the numbers will be uh, will be identical to what we saw above, but just a different presentation. Okay, uh, we can see how it presents the percentiles that I asked for. So those are the quartiles. Okay, uh, it gives me a frequency table. Um, depending on the data, the frequency table may be pretty big, as you see here. Uh, depending on how uh, how um, SPSS decides to group the data um, will sort of determine how big your table is. All right, and then uh, if you want to group it a little differently, uh, you would use the, the graphs tabs to do that. All right, I'm not going to show that in this 
in this demonstration. All right, so here's how the data uh, looks if we graph it. All right, and as I said before, there is a big spike in the middle. All right, so that's why we get sort of a higher kurtosis measurement. Okay, um, we can see that other than that, the data more or less um, looks fairly normal, fairly normally distributed. Okay, All right, I'm going to show you the last way to get some descriptives out of this. All right, and that's with the explore, uh, the explore feature. Okay, and uh, yeah, this one is already set up. So um, what I'm going to do here is again, I'm going to look at change. All right, and uh, I'm going to look at it um, by a, a factor. All right, so. I'm going to sort of cluster analyze this thing by weekdays, all right? And then uh, I've asked it to label some cases, and I'll show you where that comes into, into play, all right? I'm going to leave some of this stuff as default, so I'm going to want to display both statistics and plots so you can see the difference between uh, descriptives you get with the Explore feature and the other two. All right, here you can see if I go in here, um, I pretty much don't have any choices. It will just give me descriptives. It'll tell me what descriptives are. All right. Uh, if you want, you can add outliers and uh, you can add percentiles. So you can see uh, extreme values and then and then percentile cutoff points. All right. Under plots, I am going to. We've already seen a histogram, so you you know just know that you can get a histogram from from the explore um, feature. Uh, I'm also gonna deselect the uh, the stem and leaf all right um, it's a pretty old method of displaying data uh, it's not really easy to to um, interpret with with the kind of data I have so being a small percentage changes it's it's really kind of difficult to look at a stem and leaf all right and so if you um, have someone who wants you to put a stem and leaf out there I'm sure they will uh, have discussed it with you uh, beforehand. All right, I think we can go through life just fine though without stem and leaves. All right, we're going to add this new thing in though a box plot. All right, which is pretty cool in itself. All right, so um, other than that, I am going to click continue, and then I'm going to click OK to let the engine calculate things. Okay, and so uh, first thing we see is okay, it separated them into five. Uh, subgroups all right so five samples all right and you can see uh, the number of observations in each sample okay so fewer Mondays sort of reflecting the holidays in in a year all right and then uh, we get a descriptive uh, a table of descriptives slightly below um, and yeah it's shown alphabetically so um, Friday comes first, which yeah, isn't necessarily all that bad, I guess, in the scheme of things. Um, but you can just see that what what descriptives we get are, are somewhat different, okay? Um, and, we, and we didn't get to choose them. All right, so we get a confidence interval of the mean. That's nice, okay? Uh, we also get this 5% trimmed mean where they trim off uh, the highest 5% of values, all right? And, and then... Uh, other stuff that we're sort of familiar with um, that we've seen before all right and then if you're doing this uh, obviously you want to compare the descriptives from one factor to the next okay okay I'm not gonna do that here but if you want to you can go back and do that with your own data and here's the thing that I really want to get at that's why I'm going through the other stuff quickly uh, is the the box plot or the box and whiskers plots it's sometimes called all right here's where we can get a lot of visual data all right or a visual interpretation of of the of the um, the five subsamples okay so uh, these are also called five number summaries sometimes okay and uh, in the middle we have the median all right okay we have the median followed by the uh, 25th percentile, the 75th percentile, all right, and then, uh, so that's the interquartile range, the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile, all right, we have these fences that are actually 1.5 times the interquartile range, all right, so we extend above and below 
1.5 times okay and then where I asked it to um, to give me the the case listings for these outliers all right uh, this is where that date is showing up all right so this is one of the options that I checked going in all right okay so now we can sort of look at visually and see how these different weekdays stack up and you know in a, in a completely efficient market there shouldn't be any difference between uh, these these five number summaries uh, based on a day all right but we can clearly see that there is a lot less uh, volatility on a Monday than on uh, the other days and we can also see that uh, Thursday is the most volatile day all right not to say that uh, there aren't some uh, outliers on these on this uh, in this Monday sample okay all right and uh, that is a brief overview of descriptive statistics in SPSS